This is our deadlift progression for rehabilitation purposes. When convenient, we prefer this is done barefoot for intrinsic foot strength. For our first progression, we'll do a kettlebell, dead, kettlebell deadlift. Notice that right now we did it elevated on blocks. So when first teaching the deadlift, we like to elevate to shorten the range of motion and also to lessen the load on your back. To set up for the kettlebell deadlift, we like the kettlebell placed in between the arches of your feet. So notice that it lines up with the arches of Dr. Riley's feet. And we elevated the kettlebell so that he doesn't have to bend down as far to pick it up. So if you would please demonstrate our first one, notice it a slight bend in the knees. He's gonna push his hips back. He's gonna kind of corkscrew and try to almost break that kettlebell apart to maintain stiffness through his spine and come back up. Notice how he's performing a good hip hinge and he's not performing a squatty motion. I'll now have Dr. Riley show us the wrong way to do a kettlebell deadlift. So that would be more of a squat. One more like that for me. And then we'll show the proper way again doing a hip hinge. Perfect, and once we've mastered the kettlebell deadlift, we'll then move forward into a barbell deadlift. Just like with the kettlebell, usually we will start people, we'll elevate this bar on some blocks so that you don't have to go all the way down as it takes a lot of range of motion and more form. And when learning this, we like to shorten that range of motion by using blocks or setting it on the pins in the squat rack. For rehabilitation purposes here, we are just going to do a standard two-hand over grip compared to what if you were in a competition you would see the off grip like that but we're just going to go standard overhand since this is for rehabilitation purposes the same cues he used with the kettlebell notice that the bar is touching his shins he has good foot intrinsic function he's going to push his hips back and then really corkscrew and try to almost break that bar in half to maintain stiffness through the spine Notice that his knees are slightly bent, but they're nowhere near 90 degrees. And as he goes down, that bar is tracing down his legs. If that bar gets out away from your legs, it'll put a lot of stress on your lower back. He'll now show you the improper way to do it by doing more of a squatting motion, which would make this more quad dominant. And also would put more stress on your lower back as you're, he has to try to fight to get that bar around his knees compared to when he does it the correct way. The bar just kind of slides up his legs.